the latest research in mindfulness is showing that uh, the if that it's possible to actually practice paying attention in systematic ways that change the way the brain is wired, changes the way the brain functions, changes the structure, the very structure of the brain in ways that enhance well-being and clarity and multiple intelligences. So this is a very, very exciting time where science and meditation are coming together because uh, we're discovering that the human organism is really capable of profound, the technical word is called plasticity, that the brain is an organ that changes in relationship to experience, and actually the chromosomes are changing always in relationship to experience. And so meditation even seems to be able to drive changes in which genes in our chromosomes are being upregulated and which genes are being downregulated, which means we have a lot more freedom to uh, transform our organism and our life experience and, and attain some degree of profound well-being and satisfaction than what we ever thought. That's scientifically amazing and uh, it also seems to be the case. Mindfulness is a way to live your life as if it really mattered and that involves being in the present moment with open-hearted presence and kindness towards yourself. Well, all of us are very busy, so how do we bring mindfulness into our life? The way to do it is any way we can that feels right to us. So there's no one right way to do this, but uh, certain ways in which we cultivate awareness can be very valuable. And uh, one thing that we might bring our awareness to is the body. And just a sense of remembering to feel us, our lives unfolding in the body as opposed to only in our head. So uh, that can be done in many different ways, a sense of the body as a whole, walking, sitting, eating, moving, uh, or just being in touch with the breath, one's own breath and the feeling of the breath coming in the, into the body, the feeling of the breath leaving the body. Uh, but it's important to remember it's not about the breathing, it's not some breathing exercise or something special you're supposed to be doing. It's recognizing that it's very special that you're breathing at all. If you're not breathing, you're dead. So could we be aware of breathing and how special this is and feel the energy of it as if in this moment, this is my life. And it's not waiting for the weekend to have my life or waiting when I finish some big project, but every moment is my life. Then, even in very stressful situations, you can move into the actuality of the situation and find ways to move with it and regulate your own reactivity to it so that in some very, very deep way, you are not running away and you're not pushing through anything but allowing things to unfold as they do. That's the heart of creativity and that way we get the most work done with the least distraction and the least effort. It's an art form and it takes a while to learn. It's not something where you just hear me say this on the web and the next thing, oh yeah, I'll be mindful for the rest of my life. It's one of the most difficult things in the world, if not the most difficult thing in the world for us human beings to do, is to be present in our own lives and to be kind and less judgmental of ourselves. That's why it's worth doing. It's worth practicing. But it's not a doing, really, when all is said and done. It's a way of being, and actually a way of being awake and yourself. And the present moment, which is the only moment we're ever actually alive in, tends to get obliterated, really squeezed to the point where we're not in the present moment anymore. We're always in the past, always in the future, and that's a prescription for unhappiness. Happiness isn't some of the time when, you know, at the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's right now, in the midst of whatever is happening. And this is an art form, so it does take some time, it does involve some discipline, but I would throw out, well, what else is there to do? Because if you're missing your entire life, Whatever moment you decide it's time to reconnect with your life, that moment, guess when that will be? It will be now. Again, you look at your watch, oh my God, it's now, again. So we only have moments of now, why not, why not make the most use of them now? What is the most important thing that I've learned over the years about mindfulness? I don't know. That it's a mystery, that it's a gift, that, um, we are geniuses, 
that we're miraculous beings, and that we ignore most of our beauty and drive ourselves crazy over all these things that are really not important. So we're driven by the urgent, miss the important, and then wind up uh, a lot of the time being unhappy. And then look elsewhere for the solution. This is a prescription for disaster. <laughs> and uh, when I see people coming to mindfulness, our medical patients, for instance, by the hundreds, by the thousands, by the tens of thousands, and turning their lives around and having many of their medical symptoms fall away and coming to live their lives more fully, it's an unbelievably gratifying work. So this work is moving into medicine, it's working, moving into psychology, it's moving into psychiatry, it's moving into education, into the law, into, into government. And uh, that itself is, I think, a very good sign for humanity. I'll say one last thing, I guess, which is that we call our species Homo sapiens sapiens in Latin, the species that knows and knows that it knows, or the species that is aware and is aware that it is aware. Well, so far, I don't think we've really lived up to that name as a species. Now, with uh, the ecological uh, sort of uh, crisis that we're in, and with all the other crises that the human mind has created for itself and for the planet, maybe it is time for us to wake up to what that name is actually pointing to and fully embody ourselves in that way as a species that understands our capacity for awareness and then balances thought out in a way that uh, has profound value. And ultimately, when all is said and done, I call that love.